bit about this property. This is uh, um, one of the largest tracts that we've ever offered. Uh, this is 408 acres, according to the county, um, about 30 miles southeast of Springfield, Missouri. It sits right on the county line between Webster County, Missouri and Douglas County, Missouri, if you look at the map here. Uh, so it, it's all contiguous, but you've got about 240 acres in Webster County. County line is, is right here, and then 168 acres in Douglas County. Um, so we'll, we'll zoom out, we'll show you where this is, we'll zoom in, we'll take a look at it. Uh, monster property, uh, just absolutely phenomenal area for, uh, for hunting, for white-tailed deer hunting, for turkey hunting, for recreation. Um, obviously the property is, is buildable. Uh, there's no power on it, so you'd have to do an off-grid thing. Um, there's power in the area. Uh, we haven't researched the cost of getting it to the property, but, but there is currently no power on the property. Um, we had good cell service out there, uh, certainly in the high areas. Um, so solar would be a good option. There's some nice cleared spots. Um, as far as building sites, you've got north facing slopes, south facing slopes, east and west, you've got level areas. I mean, it, it's just a massive, massive property. So it's, it's, it's uh, got a ton of possibilities miles of, of trails um, we mapped out some of the trail system but there's there's trails we didn't even go down so there's a there's a lot more out there um, the, generally um, we don't have properties this large um, we often uh, will look at a track like this we'll do some splits um, sell some of the smaller tracks in this case since this has been used as basically one big hunting paradise uh, for, for decades, uh, we decided to go ahead and, and offer it, give someone the chance to, uh, uh, to pick up a 400 plus acre tract of good quality wooded uh, hunting land. Um, and it, it's not something we could do very often, but, but we're excited to be able to do it this time. Uh, this does have, um, as I mentioned, it's been used specifically for deer hunting and turkey hunting for decades. In addition to the trail system, it's got several uh, shooting houses. So uh, elevated, essentially elevated closed in deer stands. Uh, we found three or four of them. You can check out the videos. Uh, there are probably more out there. Um, we try to keep these intros fairly short uh, just because we know that people don't necessarily want to watch uh, a super long intro of a property. Also, when we go to upload it, if it gets over 15 minutes, um, we have some problems with the uploads. So uh, good chance this one will be over 15 minutes. Uh, so we apologize in advance, but there is so much to see uh, on this property. Why don't we start with this? Let's start, uh, we're going to zoom way out and first of all, show you where this property is. Uh, we're using the MapRite interactive map, by the way. You'll see the same map uh, on, on the listing page, within the listing page for the property. And you can actually do most of the stuff we're doing as far as zooming in, zooming out, changing the base layers, flipping it over to a topo map. You can do all of that stuff uh, without a MapRite account just on the listing page. Um, when you go to visit the property, uh, we highly recommend you download the free MapRite app. Um, and then you can actually, um, within the listing page, once you've downloaded the app, you can click on a couple things. And um, not only will this map open up on your phone, but uh, it'll, it'll uh, what am I trying to say? It'll, it'll show where you are. So you can be looking at the map and kind of tracking yourself. Makes it much easier to get to the property. Uh, cool way to explore the property. Uh, on the website at the, at the top, I think it's the FAQ tab. If you click on that, I believe we have a video toward the top of the FAQ page that explains how MapRite works. Uh, just really quickly, you, you don't need a paid subscription. You don't need a, I don't even think you need a trial subscription if, unless they've changed something. Just download the app. Don't even open it. Just leave it on your phone and then follow the directions in that video um, to get it lined up. And we'd be happy to help you with that. You can call us in the office. Our office happens to be, um, only about 20 miles from this property. So you can stop by as well and, and we can get you set up with that. Okay, so let's zoom out here. Uh, what I was about to say though, when I brought up MapRite, as we zoom out, these labels will start to get kind of funky. Uh, MapRite's a great program, but it does have some limitations. So at some point we just might turn the label layer off. And you can see how messy that looks. So let's go ahead and turn the, oh, they went away. Let's turn the arrows off as well then phone is blowing up over here in the, at the desk. Okay, well, where are we? We'll turn the arrows, we'll turn the, okay. So here's the property again, the 408 acres. Uh, this is Highway 60, runs east out of Springfield. This is Seymour, Missouri. 
which um, is about five miles north of the property as, as the crow flies by road it's further uh, if you look down here to the southeast you've got Ava Missouri and from Highway 60 you just go west and you go through a few little towns and then you hit the big city of Springfield Missouri which is about 30 miles um, west of the property again further by road but just for location purposes it's about 30 miles uh, northwest of the property so Springfield's amazing um, largest city in southern Missouri numerous hospitals colleges it's got a good airport um, a lot of direct flights and um, uh, no matter where you are you can generally get to Springfield with one connecting flight if not a direct flight if you're in in some of the major cities uh, so pretty simple to to hop into to fly into Springfield um, airports over here toward the northwest side rent a car cruise on down to highway 60 and shoot over toward the property uh, stunning stunning location um, Branson is only about uh, 30 miles south of Springfield so that's where we're right down here it's nine thirty. there's Branson right there cool place to spend the day there's a lot to do in Branson uh, the property itself so if you want to get to the property a couple ways to get there uh, you're coming from Springfield you'll likely take highway 60 to the east and there's two ways you can go I'll show you the way that I'll show you the way that we go uh, kind of one of those deals that it's it's the way we went the first time so now we go every time um, I think there are better ways to go but the way we go is, is we take Highway 60 to Seymour, um, turn at the stoplights and kind of go through town and end up on Highway K going southerly. So here's Highway K. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And why don't we change this to a, this might be a Google map, I'm not sure. MapRite finally brought back the Google base map, which was great because it generally is the best at showing the roads. Okay, so Highway 60, we, went, uh, we turned into Seymour, went south took Highway K through town. So alternately, you can take Highway BB and go that way, um, but we're gonna show you the Highway K way. So take Highway K to the south. You'll follow that down southerly. And then actually you'll, you'll cross the county line somewhere right in here, well, right up here. Uh, so you'll cross from Webster County into Douglas County, and you're gonna start looking for a county road that you're going to turn west onto. And we've marked it here with this pink line, uh, County Road 546. So that goes west off of Highway K. Uh, it's a uh, uh, Douglas County Road, so it is gravel. Take that to the west. Kind of twists and turns. Um, and then eventually you'll get to a T in the road, and that's another county road. So that's County Road 533. So you'll, you'll go on down to 533, you'll cut to the right or north down here, by the way, is Highway 14. So that's the other way we could have come. Um, and you can avoid a lot of the gravel road that way if you want to do so. That's where I had mentioned taking BB Highway to the south. You could take BB all the way down to Highway 14, go east on Highway 14. It says there's a little town called Tigris. There was 100 years ago. Now you might see like the old brick or old rock uh, county store. Um, you'll cross over Beaver Creek and then go north onto County Road 533 if you go that way. So you can avoid quite a bit of gravel. You still have a couple miles of gravel um, because 533 is gravel, but you would avoid all the gravel on 546 if you go that way. So just whichever way you want to go. So you're going north on 533. And again, that's a gravel county road. Um, you'll actually cross over. This is Beaver Creek here. You'll cross over Beaver Creek. Uh, it's a good low water bridge, um, which is essentially a, a wide concrete slab with culverts built in underneath it. Um, and it's designed so that when the water gets super high, it just flows right over the slab. Um, so, I mean, we've never been out there when the water's been so high that you wouldn't want to drive across it. But basically, if it's going over the slab and you can see the bottom of the slab, you know, we feel pretty good about crossing. If it's if it's not clear, if it's murky, if you can't see the bottom of the slab, uh, you don't want to cross it because you don't know if that slab has been washed out if there was a, you know, a torrential downpour. Uh, so anyway, you cross over Beaver Creek, uh, keep going on 533. And once you cross Beaver Creek, it's really not too much further. Um, you'll get to essentially the end of the county road. Uh, you'll see a nice uh, farm here on the left, kind of sits up from the county road. 
uh, the road turns right and becomes a private driveway and straight ahead, straight ahead of you, you'll see the, uh, the gate at the start of the easement. Uh, so it's a, a pipe gate. Uh, currently, it's, a, it's an older gate. Um, looks like it's been there 20 or 30 years. Um, and that's the gate that will remain as long as it's still in working condition. So that's going to be locked. Contact us um, for the key or the code or whatnot to open up the gate. Um, but when you get to that point, you'll, you'll stop. You'll open up the gate, pull on through. Uh, hop out and close the gate uh, just because you never know who may or may not have have cattle back there So you want to keep that gate shut um, This blue dashed line is just indicating a creek bed and that this white dashed line is indicating the start of the easement So you pull on through um, You you absolutely do want four-wheel drive and ideally you want a four-wheel drive that can handle some scratches uh, Because this is a, a very 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 low maintenance easement road um, our guys may be going in to just trim back some of the brush uh, uh, just for that reason to, to keep it from rubbing against you know your vehicle but uh, you, you probably don't want to come out here in your brand new Denali if you can help it um, I mean yeah <laughs> we, we've been up and down the road several times and and we haven't had an issue but we have had some brush rub the side of the vehicle uh, and we have had to use four-wheel drive a couple times and I'll tell you why a, as I zoom in here so it, Again, you go through the gate, the easement begins, that's the white dashed line. Um, you go in just a few hundred yards and you can see this creek. Now this is not Beaver Creek, this feeds into Beaver Creek. And this blue dashed line is trying to represent the creek bed, but it's obviously not quite accurate as we look at the aerial. Um, but anyway, once you get up a few hundred feet, you can see uh, uh, where, the, where the road crosses the creek bed right here. So what has happened over the last few years or decades is as the creek bed um, you know gets high a few times a year and overflows its banks the creek decided it might be convenient instead of making this turn to go ahead and just you know run down the road easement uh, so the creek bed is still what you see here but you can tell that if it gets super high it probably does run down this road easement and so that tends to to bring some big rocks and some sticks and, and whatnot um, so with four-wheel drive we were fine but we generally have to go really slow over this protect this particular section of road because you've got some big rocks and whatnot um, it might be a deal where you know someone just spends a, an hour or two and rolls the big rocks out of the way uh, there weren't any boulders that you know we couldn't climb over but it, it was a bumpy ride on that section let's just put it that way we wanted four we, we needed four-wheel drive and it was a bumpy ride okay so the road crosses over that creek bed uh, smooths out a little bit there and then uh, again this this white dash line is just kind of giving you a representation of, of where it is if you look at the aerial you can clearly see please don't drive through this guy's field stay on the road uh, don't drive through anybody's anybody's meadow or pasture we'll see if we can modify that a little bit to show because you can see clearly where that road is okay this is where it gets kind of interesting though and this is the cool part okay so you can see how, how it kind of splits here uh, to the right goes up a small starts going up a hill and to the left um, does not so when we bought this property um, we had bought it through a real estate agent we, we weren't able to talk directly to the seller until the closing and so uh, the property does have um, legal access uh, via the easement uh, so no worries there uh, title company covered all that we're good to go uh, the the easement reads um, something to the effect of um, the road that that was the old uh, county road that linked the little town of Tigris uh, up to Seymour or something like that and so our understanding looking at the maps was that the access to this property via that easement instead of going right at the Y that you had to go straight Cross the creek bed again keep on going and you can see there is um, an old road there go 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 another half mile finally get to the the corner of the property um, and we thought that by looking at different maps I mean if you look at the topo map and this particular topo is what they call the what map right calls the vintage topo which just means it's old so it's probably from the anywhere from the 50s to the 80s and on the vintage topo it actually does show yeah there was a trail there uh, so our assumption, uh, which you know may be accurate, is that that is the actual old county road, 
and that that is the easement um, to the property. But anyway, we were talking with the seller at the closing, and he said uh, that his understanding was it, it actually, you can go right at that Y, and that that was the old county road that goes up to the property that way, um, which was fine by us because in our minds, that's really much better access uh, than crossing back over the creek bed and going up that way. Uh, so if, if that's the case, um, then you take a right at the Y. Uh, you get it, There's a little steepness up in this part. Uh, with four-wheel drive, you should be fine. And then, bam, you're, you're at the, the southwest corner of the property. Uh, so now you know what we know about that. We had assumed that, that this longer section was the easement onto the property and that you had to access it via this uh, area right here. Uh, the seller said uh, his understanding was that the old the old county road actually did go right and go up that hill onto the property uh, if that's the case great that's the way we've been going uh, if if that's not the case i mean then you've got you've got access one of the two ways um, currently we've essentially you know kind of been going either way but but it is more convenient to to take a right and go up that way so uh, once again to reiterate it, it does have insured access uh, you are covered there um, whether it's whether this is the old county road right here or whether this is the old county road right here that's what we're not sure about um, but either way yes you can drive to the property uh, the the road itself i mean when we go back to the the vintage topo uh, it shows it going up here crossing over the corner it keeps on going uh, crosses over there keeps on going uh, and then eventually uh, gets up here and, and links up to a, a county road. Um, and the, the trail that the topo map shows, um, I mean, there's still a road pretty much right in that location, uh, whereas the maps we saw did not show, whoops, go back here. The maps we saw didn't really represent any, any road, any existing road here, although there may have been. Um, so, what, you know, do with that info what you will. Uh, we, we happen to like this access better because it, it's a quicker way to get onto the property. Um, but either way, like, like we said, it, it does have uh, uh, insured access. Whoop, where are we going here? Uh, as far as um, once you get up further, see kind of the, the white, the thicker tan lines are the trail system within the property. Uh, the part that we mapped out, there's more. Uh, the blue dash lines are the, the little creek beds, um, which are, are going to be wet weather creeks. Some of them, you know, some of them were, have been running every time we've been out there, but um, we just call everything a wet weather creek to be on the safe side. And then the white dash lines are, uh, you know, the, the potential easements. So you can see where that crosses over the property. This section here, um, although it, it may be part of the, it may or may not be part of the old, uh, um, county road we really don't know the status on crossing over that part because we don't know um, we don't know who owns this property here just like we don't know who owns this property up here so that's why we put dash lines there if you have any questions you know ask us about that um, all I can say is once again it, it does have insured access um, the only part that we thought we were clear on and it turned out we weren't was when you get to this Y, uh, this, the person we bought it from, the seller said, take a right, shoot up that way. Um, you know, that's, that's the old county road. The maps we have seen kind of look like this is the old county road, but either way, um, you're covered. You, you've got access to your property. Um, once you get on the property, man, then, then the real fun begins. The trail system, unbelievable out here. The timber's gorgeous. Um, so map right, does have different uh, base layers that you can that you can use and uh, generally we cycle through those because sometimes there'll be a, a wintertime aerial like this one um, but in this particular case all the different aerials are are wintertime aerials so uh, check out our drone video I think we do have a at least one video that that uh, shows the property in the summer there's an infrared that's kind of fun Oop. Uh, but I mean the property's heavily wooded. It does have some natural openings. It does have uh, some beautiful glade areas, uh, but there's a lot of, of uh, really pretty timber on here. Um, we didn't see any signs of recent logging. Uh, we know that the seller uh, a couple times, because he had owned it for years, 
uh, there was some program through the county where if you would do a controlled burn to burn the underbrush, they would pay you a certain amount of money, and it was a pretty good amount of money. Uh, so he did that a few times, which actually kept the brush down um, and Im improved the health of the medium and, and big timber, uh, which was awesome. Uh, and you could see that when you were out there. As you look to the east, you can see a property that actually was uh, heavily logged about 10 or 15 years ago. We happen to be familiar with that because we looked at it at the time. Um, we didn't buy it. The people who did buy it turned it into the Southern Missouri off-road ranch. Um, so that's pretty popular. You'll see uh, uh, some people heading out there to, to, uh, to check that out all the time. It, it borders a lot of the east side uh, of this property. And okay, let's, I'm gonna break this up into two videos. Just one second here. Go. Sorry about that. The computer was acting kind of glitchy on this end. So we, we did a restart and we're back in action here. But uh, where were we? We were talking about uh, the property. Um, just the timber on the property uh, appears to have some, uh, some pretty good sized timber. Um, check out the drone video, check out the ground videos. Uh, mostly hardwood trees, red oak, white oak. But we're talking about this property to the east. Um, Southern Missouri Off-Road Ranch. Uh, so that does directly border the east side, which is, is kind of cool. Um, it, it's not like a, you know, a, a crazy place with, with uh, all kinds of noise day and night. It's just a place where people get, get together and, and do their side-by-sides and stuff on the trails. Uh, this is way toward the west side of there, so I don't think you'll have much traffic from the, from the off-road ranch. Um, whoops. I'm just going to silence this for a second. There we go. Oh, hello? Don't know what happened there. <laughs> uh, I'm trying not to cut the video again here so everybody can see, but uh, where we were headed with that was, was just looking at the aerials. Uh, you can tell the difference between um, a property that was, was heavily logged, like this off-road ranch, uh, and this property, uh, which, which hasn't had, uh, from what we could see, any, any recent logging on it. Uh, so the off-road, even though that was 15 years ago that this off-road ranch to the east um, was heavily logged, you can see it, it's got a lot more kind of sparsely wooded areas and, and what appear to be brushy areas, uh, whereas this, this property is 408, um, larger, fuller tree canopies, um, just, just a nice deal. So uh, there, there is some timber value. Uh, we have no idea how much um, after the property's been, been paid for in full. Of course, you'd be welcome to, uh, to log it or, or uh, you know, build some log cabins or timber frame homes or, or whatnot. Um, that's once it's been paid for uh, in full. Uh, in the meantime, if you're widening trails, if you're clearing some sites or doing improvements, uh, we do have a pretty simple program in place where we can um, get you written permission to do that uh, pretty easily. Why don't we take a look at the actual property? So again, um, about 168 acres in Douglas County. That's this tract here. And then about 240 in Webster County. Uh, so you're covering both counties. Uh, if you're coming in uh, at the southwest corner, we'll just kind of go through this. And Okay, so if you're coming in at the southwest corner, you'll enter the property. Uh, within just a few hundred feet, you'll see a nice pond on the left. You can kind of see it there with the aerial. Um, trail continues. You've got big timber uh, left and right. Uh, the trail splits off and goes north. And actually... Um, that leads to probably our favorite little uh, little hunting stand or hunting cabin or whatnot out there. Uh, let's see if we can. Ah, it doesn't show it too well. Winter time. I mean, you you definitely do want to play around with the map, right? Because it's really handy to to see it kind of from different angles and different time times of year. Uh, this is which base layer? That's a Google base layer, and it happens to be showing it in the dead of winter. So no leaves on the trees makes it easy to tell the hardwood trees from the, the pines and cedars. Um, good way to look at the trail system is the Google map if it's a wintertime map. So if you cut north off that main trail, you've got a clearing here, keep on going, open up to this larger clearing, and that's where, uh, like I said, it, it's probably our favorite little hunting stand that we've seen. It's, it's a small, uh, very small um, deer stand, totally enclosed but it, it's about 10 or 15 feet in the air on these large poles, and it over it looks northerly. Um, well, you can look any direction, but it's designed to look northerly because this is actually kind of a valley. So from where the, the uh, hunting stand is, 
the land slopes down to this valley and slopes back up and you've got this large natural glade area here and we've had uh, a couple people tell us uh, that right here in this glade is where they've gotten where they where they've seen the biggest deer um, from the cabin uh, because they'll cross right over that natural glade which is pretty cool um, you've got uh, I don't know if we'll go over the whole you know road system we've mapped out we've got roads going this way and that uh, there's a large clearing up here um, actually that's a that could potentially, if you wanted to build, you know, some kind of lodge or, or retreat, this might be a great place to do it. Uh, the the meadow is, is um, appears to be fairly level. Uh, there is another elevated hunting um, cabin or blind or whatnot over here toward the northwest side, and there's a little pond toward the southeast side. Uh, so it's not as big as that first pond. Um, try some different views here. That's not too good. Well, <laughs> uh, it's not as big as that first pond. And in fact, when we were out there uh, fairly recently, it really didn't have much water in it, so it probably needs to be cleaned out, but uh, it is there. Um, and a lot of these open meadow areas probably haven't been mowed um, or brush hogged for a year or two. Uh, so even though you can still you know, drive through them, if you really wanted to, to make them gorgeous, you'd, you'd want to mow them. Uh, from there, a couple trails going northerly. Uh, you've got a trail that goes down to this other meadow area trail that runs up along the creek bed um, somewhere in this particular creek bed is where we took I think a short video showing a really cool rock waterfall and it, I mean on a piece this big it's common to have trails that actually you know extend off the property so these trails appear to, to basically go out into the off-road ranch uh, but you know we really didn't cross the boundaries of, of the 408 acres to map those out but if we check some different, there you can kind of see it. This weirdness over here that uh, that you see on map right, that's just from them stitching two maps together. So they've, they've kind of done a wintertime view and then more of a summertime view. Uh, that's an off-road ranch anyway. Google map. Uh, so I mean, the, the trails may extend into the off-road ranch. There's no easement for you to, to drive into the off-road ranch, but um, you know, if you talk to them, it might be a convenient way to, to get from one place to another if they're cool with it. We really don't know. Um, but the trail system, I mean, <laughs> so much out here for trails. Uh, to get to the northernmost part, whoops. There we go. To get to the northernmost part the way we did it, um, I think from this meadow, we, we took the existing deal going up crossed over this section and then you're up on kind of the northern 80 um, but ag again these two sections that are that are the white dashed lines although those may be the it's old county road, road um, we we don't know if our easement applies to those particular tracks uh, because we don't know the owners of of this tract here and, and this tract over here uh, i guess we could flip this on map right's cool if, if you have a full version you can flip and see flip the parcel there on see the who the owners are on the 408 408 acres it's showing isaac brothers because we bought this recently and although the county assessor probably has it updated already map right all those other uh, apps that, that show land ownership they don't update immediately they they basically pull from the county records once or twice a year to update their system uh, so this is likely to show us isaac brothers on map right on uh, on x on hunt on all those uh, for six months or a year. Uh, there's the Southern Missouri Off-Road Ranch, which is cool. But again, we, we haven't talked to uh, Donald James Majors to see if that easement extends over that portion or not. Um, the road was open. Um, you know, do with that info what you will. If, if you're respectful about using that road, then um, it might be absolutely fine. But uh, otherwise, uh, I, there may be trails going to the North 80 directly on the property. If not, you could certainly create someone. I know the topography, it does drop down and back up. Uh, while we're doing that, why don't we just flip over to a topo map and we'll have a look at uh, the topography on this. That is actually one of the coolest parts of this property. Okay, so we are in the, uh, the true Ozark, so you've got a lot of ups and downs and hills and hollers and that stuff. Uh, and this tract is big enough that it has all of that and then some. So it's got high ridges, it's got low valleys, um, 
slopes facing north and south and east and west. Uh, so if, if you're, excuse me, if you're familiar with the topo map, this definitely makes some sense. If not, this doesn't make any sense at all. But basically what the topo is showing is that the elevation change, um, you know, the gradient of a slope. Uh, so once you get used to looking at topo maps, you can glance at this, you can know um, where you're likely to see the creek beds, where you're likely to find the trails, because the trails tend to run on the top of ridges. Um, in this case, if we start at the, let's start at the southwest tip, if you're coming in that way, it shows the pond, which is cool. Uh, this particular topo, MapRite gives us two topo options. We've got this one, which is called a vintage topo. We've got this one, which is called a modern topo. Uh, they're telling you the same thing. Uh, the modern topo was, was done within the last few years. The vintage topo was probably created by the, uh, by the federal government sometime between the 1950s and 80s or 90s. Uh, so it's, it's cool that they give us both options because that's sometimes where you can see you know, older existing roads like we mentioned before um, and that kind of stuff. So we'll just leave it on vintage topo. Um, as you're coming in at that southwest side, oh, also on the vintage topo, uh, these white, whitish areas are indicating that when the topo was created, uh, those were open, either meadows or glades or pastures. And then the, the light green indicates it was wooded. So we know that when this topo was made, however many years ago, um, this southwest corner around the pond was bas basically open pasture, which makes sense because they likely created that pond 50 years ago, 100 years ago uh, for animals, for cattle. So they would have had an open area around the pond. This shows that this area um, was open, but I think that's because that's that natural glade. And then when this map was created, uh, these meadows that you see, that, that you will see, uh, apparently didn't exist because it's not showing a white area on that. I don't know if the modern topo does that. Eh, not really. I see some white patches over to the east, not on the property. All right, let's go back to vintage. Uh, so as you're coming in, um, as you take a right on that little section of road and start going northerly, you can see it's, it's rising up. Uh, there is some steepness to it. Once you get onto the property, it actually levels out quite a bit. Uh, it's practically flat on this very southwest corner. And then as you head more easterly, it starts rising up. You've got the road that goes to that, uh, that cool little hunting cabin deal. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you can keep going east. Uh, that goes up a, a fairly steep hill. And then once you get up here, uh, you're on a, a large level ridge. And the road essentially goes with that ridge all the way toward this northeast area. And that's where um, where that open meadow is. But we'll flip to the aerial photo and, and you can see, uh, although it is a good sized meadow, I mean, look at this large level area out here. I mean, you could expand that a lot if you wanted to, or if you wanted that to be your private uh, uh, building site and wanted more open ground. Uh, I mean, you could, you could drastically expand expand the size of that meadow and still have basically all level area um, right here looking at the topo. So let's quickly go to the aerial. We'll just do a Google. There you go. So you can see that the cleared meadow, um, but actually the topo is, is showing us that there's quite a bit more level area where if, if you wanted, you know, a, a monster yard, uh, just level, you know, grass, uh, you could do that. Uh, or you could certainly um, leave the timber there. Okay, so we'll go back to uh, the vintage topo. Uh, so from there, uh, if you take this trail westerly, you're going down a pretty steep hill down to the creek bed, um, probably a very steep hill down to the creek bed. If you go northerly, you have a couple options. You can go northerly and stay on this ridge, or you can kind of go northwesterly and go down this hill to that other meadow area. Uh, and from there, you've got a, a trail that goes up and wraps around, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you've also got the option of um, taking this trail and going up this hill. Then as far as crossing onto the North 80, uh, that was like we mentioned before. Um, the way we did it when we were out there is we just followed the existing trail um, that kind of cut right across. Um, we, like we mentioned a couple times, we don't know if that's included in the easement. Uh, so certainly be respectful if you're doing that. Uh, but that was a good way to get to this north part. And then once you're on the north 80, uh, it's got a, a beautiful ridge system. You go up here, a uh, trail that cuts down to the south again, uh, this loop-de-loop -loop area. Uh, so we were out there and we basically just 
uh, with the full version of MapRite, the paid version, uh, I believe you can, uh, I know we can, I think you can uh, track where you are. So we just turned on the tracking and uh, drove around out there. And so that's how we ended up uh, with, with some of this road system mapped out. Uh, most of the driving we did uh, just with a half ton truck. Um, I know at some point one of the guys went out there with a side by side and goofed off as well. So he might have mapped some out. But uh, the majority of this trail system, uh, I mean, you can take a pickup truck if it's four wheel drive and, and get through, um, which is pretty cool. So again, the, the dashed blue lines are the, the little gravel creek beds, approximate location of those. Um, just <laughs> awesome property. I mean, for hunting, for recreation, uh, for building, uh, be aware, be, you know, aware obviously that it's off grid. Uh, so although power is nearby, power is not on the property. So if, if, if you gotta have power, you wanna work that out beforehand. Um, otherwise, uh, solar, is a, a viable option more and more every day. Uh, certainly wind and, and all that stuff could be an option as well, but uh, fantastic tract. Uh, I mean, we're just extremely excited about this one. Um, we could keep going with this video. We could go hours. I mean, it's, it's just a really, really cool property. Uh, we, we actually have talked about getting out there to explore more just uh, for our own curiosity, just because it, it's so big and there's such a trail system out there. But um, as it is now, uh, we, we know for sure about three, I think three or four elevated uh, enclosed hunting stands. Uh, there's the one here that looks across the valley toward the glade. Uh, there's the one up here that I'm sure was designed to hunt the open meadow area, the, the little stands up here. Uh, there's one, we found the one right toward the northern part. Zoom in and see if we can see that. Yeah, there it is right there. It's another elevated stand right there. Uh, I feel like there's at least one more that the guys discovered. There you can see it. Uh, just, just a lot going on on this property. It, it is awesome. Awesome, awesome tract. Uh, you've got mature timber, you've got younger timber, you've got everything in between. Um, the location, uh, I mean, it's just tough to beat, um, you know, being within an hour of Springfield uh, because Springfield keeps growing by leaps and bounds. Um, property prices um, across the nation, uh, but especially in Southern Missouri or Southwest Missouri in the Springfield market um, have just been, been leading the pack. So uh, to be able to, to offer this is something we're, we're really excited about. We know people are gonna have questions. It's a big tract. Um, so give us a call, send us an email. Um, we can get you set up on MapRite. We, we, can, we can help you out any way possible and, and answer any questions you may have. But um, we do offer complete owner financing. You can see the details uh, on the website. Um, you can check all that out. And then if you have any questions, uh, we generally put a direct link in the, uh, the description for the video. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, or if you're watching it on the listing page, you've already found the listing page, so that's great as well. But uh, there you go, 408 acres. Um, close to Springfield, close to Seymour, Missouri, close to Ava, Missouri. Uh, extremely, extremely private tract. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call, send us an email. We would certainly love to talk to you.